everybody so was fine. Call the meeting to order. This is a meeting of the Joint Economic Development Organization for Wednesday, March 20, March 14th, 2018. If we could start with a uh, roll call. Commissioner Bueller? Here. Commissioner Cook? Here. Commissioner Archer? Here. Mayor De La Isla? Here. Deputy Mayor Jensen? Council Member Padilla? Council Member Lesser? Here. Council Member Hiller? Council Member Clear? Here. Council Member Ortiz? Council Member Emerson? Here. Council Member Mays? Council Member Cohen. Before we begin, since we have some non-voting members and some voting members here, just to make sure uh, we do have a quorum present. Yes, the quorum is for. Okay. Just want to make sure we clarify that before we begin. We have, I'm, um, Mr. Chair, we have four voting members in present. A quorum is four. We have five voting members. Oh, present. we do have five. Okay. Thank you. So, if we could proceed with our next item, item number three. Item three, action item, approval of contract C1 2018 between Jado owner and Champion Builders contractor for the East Topeka Learning Center renovation and addition project. This is a action item, and this is uh, to review the contract between Jado and Champion Builders for the East Topeka Learning Center renovation and addition project. Before we begin, there's been some um, developments that have occurred in the last 24 hours. Um, Kind of, there's a memorandum that has been submitted. Uh, Jim, do you want to kind of take it from here and kind of talk about the changes that have occurred? Sure, I'd be happy to. Thank you. Um, for several months, um, legal counsel for City of Topeka, when when Jado was with the City of Topeka, and legal counsel for Go Topeka, have been working on trying to get the sales tax exemption. Uh, certificate in place for the project as you may already know um, the the property the real estate is owned by Jado and the Board of Tax Appeals has already determined that that property is exempt for, for property tax uh, for property tax purposes so I think the assumption all along was since Boda the state determined that Jado's a munis municipality and a a political subdivision capable of having a, a property tax exemption that it would be a slam dunk that we could get a sales tax exemption um, on this construction project. Well, we missed the slam dunk. It, it bounced off and um, Kansas Department of Revenue has indicated to us that in their opinion, Jado would not qualify for the sales tax exemption on the project. Um, if we do not have the sales tax exemption on the project, it's going to add approximately $291,000 to the cost of the project. Uh, we've had a series of meetings with KDOR to try to come up with different permutations of setting up this contract. At one point, we thought uh, we'd, we'd keep the current contract and just add Shawnee County to the contract um, because we know that we are exempt. Of course, we, we have public projects that we construct all the time that are exempt. And when we had our initial meeting with, with KDOR about that, the response was basically, well, of course, if Shawnee County is involved, then you're an exempt en entity that would be exempt. Um, later on today, we received a communication that upon further review by KDOR, they felt that um, we should not have JADO on the same contract. That the contract should basically either be with Shawnee County or the city of Topeka if we're going to have a sales tax exemption on the project. So my recommendation is in the memo, and that is if you want to move forward at this time on this project, you're going to have to make a motion to either have Shawnee County on the, on the contract or the city of Topeka, one of our two exempt entities to be able to move forward and um, construct the project. If we move forward with Shawnee County being the 
uh, on the contract, would this be something that your office would be able to monitor? And uh, do we know whether or not this would be going through our audit finance department with Shawnee County? Yes, I've already talked to Betty Griner about how to set up um, the payment process, and really that's key to um, Kansas Department of Revenue, that the payments actually come from an exempt entity. So we would need to set up a process where payments would be made by Shawnee County, and then Shawnee County would need to be reimbursed, reimbursed out of the project budget back for those costs. We will, and from Shawnee County standpoint, let me take off my Jado Council hat and put on my Shawnee County Council hat. We're going to want to make sure we have protection in this arrangement for Shawnee County that any amounts that are necessary to be expended on this project will be reimbursed back to Shawnee County. Otherwise, I wouldn't recommend that Shawnee County enter into this contract. In the event that this board would approve the contract to be in the name of Shawnee County, this would be an item that would come before the Shawnee County Board of Commissioners? Yeah, it would need to be a contract that's then executed by Shawnee County. It'll be the same contract, but Shawnee County will be substituted as the owner. We'll have to go back to the general contractor and have them have the bonds in our name and insurance and, and the applicable contract documents altered for that purpose. So before we even get to the uh, approval of Champion Builders as the contractor or how we came to that point, are there questions regarding this? Commissioner Archer? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, do we have an agreement in place right now that we'd get reimbursed for any overages, any liabilities, anything that we may uh, uh, come about as, as contract? There is no written agreement that's been drafted for that. Okay. And we just found out about this. You called me about an hour ago. So I'm still trying to process it, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm trying to think about all the ramifications, uh, the liabilities, uh, what would be, we could be committing to. I know we've had dealings with champion builders in the past uh, that haven't gone very well. And so I, I need some time to think about this, to be honest with you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, would it be possible to defer consideration of this for two weeks? Well, I think one of the problems we come into, uh, Commissioner Archer, with all due respect, is that we are already on a tight timeline with Washburn committed to having classes begin on January 1, our, under the contract, the substantial completion is by the end of November already, leaving us less than a 30-day window. And if we delay it another two weeks, we're losing that window of that opportunity. Um, so I, I, but should, shouldn't we move cautiously? Well, I, let, let me ask, maybe the question should be, what is the risk? Um, first, what is the risk to JADO by having this done that way? Legal risk. I, I don't think there is additional legal risk to JADO. Um, we did confirm with KDOR, we explained to them that ownership of the real estate would continue in the name of JADO, and we wanted to make sure that they understood that so that if we did go down this road, that we then wouldn't get an opinion reversing once again the course that we were on. So. I don't see the risk to Jado. I see the risk to Shawnee County, County if um, there are disputes and, and litigation. We would want to make sure that Shawnee County is going to be reimbursed would that be for any costs associated with this project. And then that would be a member. That would be an item on the motion that Jado would reimburse Shawnee County for any and all funds expended in the project. You can include that in the motion. And then that would cover any live then Shawnee County would then be protected. That would be in the motion, and I think that would cover it. Okay. Councilman Lesser? Oh, sorry. And then, I'll, and then Mayor DeLisa. I'm kind of trying to wade through this, and, and questions are coming to me, um, coming to mind. So in the process of the way this goes, then, would 
would the bonds, would the performance and payments bonds, would those be continue to be in Jado's name? I think we need to change those over to Shawnee County to make them consistent with the contract. Otherwise, if there became issues that would trigger liability under those bonds, you could see the bond company say, well, sorry, Shawnee County, you don't have the right to complain about this because you're not on the bond. So that would be something that would have to be changed. And I get, I, and I get that. And I don't disagree, but the point, though, that I also have that in that, in, in, along those same lines, though, then is if Jado does continue to be the title holder of the property, in essence, I don't know that Shawnee County has an insurable interest in the, in the project other than the, the money's going through them. Huh. That would be something we'll have to sort through with, with the bond companies. Sure, kind of no, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, and it may be a recommendation that Jado and Shawnee County both be on the bonds. On the bond. I, I think the, the issue would be to go to the bond company and say, what, what's it going to take to make sure that this project's properly covered? Have we actually, I know we, a bid bond was provided when the, when the, the bid left, but have we actually received the payment and performance bonds for the project, or are we still waiting the actual? Yeah. We do have those? Yes. Thank you. Mayor Dead, Lisa Love. Thank you. So my question was, I know that there's concern with regards to liabilities and challenges with the contract, and I'm wondering if it would be a safeguard for transparency purposes that if we make this change and we approve this, that it would be added that should there be any disputes in the contract or anything that's brought up outside of the regular expenses outlined in the contract, that it would be brought back to Jado for discussion as a body. Look at our council. Well, I definitely think it should be added that certainly any disputes, any additional monies, whatever, related to the the project should be mm -hmm. Jado's final responsibility. Mm -hmm. But I think what the mayor is saying is, what if the body disagreed with monies that were requested? Is that correct? What, what if overages, liabilities, some other claim on the project came back to Jado, then we would have to uh, review those, it wouldn't automatically be covered. Is that what you're saying, Mayor? May I? Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Archer, for the question. I think that my, my sentiment in this regard is that if there were to be a dispute with regards to we've established a contract, you've raised your, your concerns that you've had dealings in the past that have not been as smooth, that I wanted to make sure that the public at large was aware that there was an issue and that this body as a whole would work together to negotiate then with that contractor to give Shawnee County then, you know, some support in that in that regard. Do you see where I'm going? I think so. I think okay. so. Uh, if I may, and Mr. Chair, Shawnee County hasn't been involved in selecting the contractor or any of the process at all. Is that correct? Only through our involvement through JADO. Um, Jado authorized the HTK, the architect, to let the right. bids on the project. So and it didn't go through the normal process that we would go through through Shawnee County for that. And so we're being asked to approve a contract between Shawnee County and Champion Builders. And would you give us a little bit of the uh, uh, history of uh, Shawnee County and Champion Builders, what's, what's occurred in the past? I cannot give you the exact years. I think the contract started in 2004, but in the area of 2004, 2005, Shawnee County constructed the uh, North Aquatic Center. Um, Champion Builders was the general contractor on that project. A company named Water's Edge was the architect engineer on the project. Approximately a month or two into the construction process, they had a significant rain event that caused silt to get underneath the floor of the main pool structure. Um, the engineer architects at that point said, time out, we've got to stop. Um, we've got to pull up the section where it came in, test it. 
make sure that the subsurface is still within contract specifications because if you get a significant amount of clay or other materials in there, you're at risk of the bottom of the pool buckling during freeze thaw, thaw events in the future. And so that was what the whole focus was. This pool was designed to have a 30 year life and our, our engineers were telling us if you, if you don't do this, then um, you run the risk that it's not gonna survive during that period of time. Of course, um, Champion felt that the problem or the reason for why this occurred was because the structures that were to be in place to protect the site from inundation were also designed by Water's Edge and they claimed that those designs were inadequate and that Water's Edge in essence <coughs> was at fault for this inundation. So we had, an, we had a dispute, a couple of different disputes, one over how far to go with, with pulling out sections of the pool and then redoing the subsurface and then ultimately who's going to be responsible for Point the order. cost of that. Point order. Yes, Councilman Lister. Uh, I, I don't know that it's appropriate right now. I mean, we, the, the developers or contractors not here to, to, you know, I think it's fair enough to say that there's been problems, there's been issues, but to dissect the specifics of it, I don't know that that's appropriate to do it without somebody here to, to defend, you know, their position on it. I think it's fair enough to say there's, there's been issues in these projects, but to go line by line, I by item, I don't know that. that Is there a parliamentarian? Um, well, I don't know that there is a requirement that the party be here. I'm trying to simply, um, I think the chair can rule on that as to whether I, it's, it's public terrain. record, I think. Yeah, I, I'm trying to I'm say talking about public record, there was a dispute. Guess. Champion made claims against the engineer architect. Architect engineer pointed fingers at Champion. There was litigation. At, in the end of the day, um, the pool was constructed. We haven't had any issues with the pool uh, to date. And um, it, it was over a year past schedule by the time that those issues were corrected. And that's the balance of basically how that project. Thank you. Jim, I guess in preparation for this uh, meeting, uh, there were some conversations that were had with uh, Dean Farrell, he's been the oversight uh, working with the selection. Um, did Mr. Farrell give you any insight as to his feelings on the selection of champion? And again, I just did he have any concerns with that champion being awarded the contract? I'll tell you what he told me, and, and, and this isn't about champion, but he felt that it was a very straightforward project, and he thought that the subcontractors were reputable good contractors and they would be doing a lot of the work on the project that was <coughs> basically the gist of a comment that he had with me on it and he had looked into sort of the the history of issues that have happened <coughs> the Council member Pleader, did you have a question so how litigation come out the litigation came out to where uh, the county released its claim for liquidated damages against Champion. Um, I think Water's Edge paid an amount of money to Champion. I think some subs might have been paid money from Champion. Uh, it, in litigation with construction, there's multiple parties. I know the county came out with the way we resolved it was we felt like, all right, we required the, the project to be constructed as designed. Um, and and the, our compromise in the situation was the compromise of liquidated damages for having the project done as scheduled. Well, I guess I'm concerned that we hold that against somebody. Right. The whole thing. And then... Um, Another question I had was, let me get this straight. We'd have a contract between the contractor in Shawnee County 
And then between Jetto and Shawnee County? Yes. We would need an agreement from Jado that Shawnee County was going to be reimbursed for any and all issues related to this project. And what what could be an issue? What I mean, like what? Well, number one, and principally, we're going to be reimbursed for any payments we make to the contract during the construction right. of the of the um, project. Um, but if there is, you know, worst case scenario there are problems and there's litigation, then, you know, those issues would have occurred with JADO. Um, all Shawnee County would be asking for is that those costs not be borne by Shawnee County because Shawnee County was willing to step in and save the sales tax exemption on the project. So there's any number of issues that can come up I think, you know, if you if you rely on someone like Dean Farrell, who's very experienced, this is a pretty straightforward project. It's it's not a aquatic center. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jim. Just in its simplest form, while there may be risk by having an additional party to the contract, that being Shawnee County, ultimately Shawnee County is acting as a pass through or conduit in order to obtain the tax certificate. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. But we would be the entity that's the sole entity that's dealing with it. That is the requirement by the state. I don't want to water that down too much and then get us in trouble on the exemption. Okay. Councilman Lesser. I, I will echo uh, Jim's comments, too. I also spoke, spoke with Dean, and Dean told me the exact same thing. Is, you know, this, this is a straightforward project. You know, he, he really felt comfortable that... Um, that um, he would be able to, to manage the project and keep it within this constraint of, of, of the specs and the cost. Um, my concern um, really is in, in regards to that, it, it's going to have to rely on, Jim, on, on your legal wise, is just making sure that the documents, um, you have to have an insurable interest, you know, and, right. and, and, and so that that's in place. And so that the, you know, my biggest concerns are it, honestly in this project are payment bond. And performance bond, you know, and making sure that those are adequately in the right people's name. So, in in the case that the the job does does not uh, get finished on time, or the job does have overrides, that we're able to to make a bond claim if we need to do that. And that that's um, where my main concern is: making sure that the documents are properly. And that is an bond. open issue at this point. Correct. And would that also need to be then added to the contract or the motion for the, tonight's consideration? I think um, it would be a good idea to add that. Specifically that Shawnee County uh, be secured in bonds? or uh, That um, Shawnee County's participation in this project through the contract would be contingent upon Shawnee County being able to obtain the appropriate bonding for the project, whether that be solely in Shawnee County's name or with Shawnee County and Jado, um, so that the project is protected and Shawnee County is protected and the public is protected. I mean, we talk about Shawnee County or Jado, but we're talking about public money. That's that's the bottom line. We don't want to structure. We don't want to save $291,000 and then cost us $3 million. Uh, um, before we move on to any consideration of a motion, if I, Mr. Sneathan, if you would be able to kind of come forward from HTK and talk about how Champion Builders came to be selected or the process that we walk through on that. Good evening, Zach Sneed and HTK Architects. Um, if I may, I may um, say a couple things regarding the contract, just in how um, I think it may protect whoever the owner is listed by the contract. They're required to have the, the payment bonds, the performance bonds, um, there's statutory bond um, insurance in the name of the owner that's in the contract. And so if um, 
So whatever the name of the owner is on the contract, Champion will provide the appropriate bonds for that owner, um, for that uh, owner. Um, from an insurance standpoint, for the property, um, I believe the insurance would probably lie with the property owner, is my understanding of I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're speaking casualty events. And yeah, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, as part of the meeting, there wasn't a packet prepared uh, going through the contract and champion builders and the outline it is several pages long. Uh, were there any questions and there are exhibits attached to it, I believe. Uh, did any of the members of JDO have a question regarding this item or the selection, the outline of the budget? I know that we have several construction uh, members of, on our team now with JDO, and that's always good to have additional set of eyes on. I would like you to talk about the process, though, of how the contractor was okay. yeah. chosen, yep. just a little bit. Yeah. So, um, and I don't, uh, I don't have the exact dates in front of me, but um, the project was uh, was sent out for bid, um, public bid. Um, we had on uh, February 9th, I believe, was when it bid, and we had nine bidders um, from really that stretched from Wichita to uh, Topeka and Kansas City, uh, up into Lincoln, Nebraska, that bid on this project. Um, the low bidder on the project was actually, um, or the, the low bidder as recorded on the bid day was Lloyd Builders out of uh, Olathe, I believe, Ottawa. Um, and they were, uh, they had made a mistake in their bid and uh, Per statute, they're able to retract their bid um, if they can show a justifiable mistake. So they retra they um, retracted their bid within the the time frame to do so, uh, making Champion Builder Builders the the next lowest bidder for the project. Um, within the um, within the uh, documents that were submitted, we did ask for a contractor qualification statement that listed their um, they talked about their uh, per past performance, um, uh, talked about their, um, their bonding capabilities for specific for size of projects, um, uh, listed references. Um, I did call um, a couple of the references um, for champion builders um, and uh, didn't find, I mean, I. Um, didn't find anything that said that they would be unqualified to do this project. Any other questions for Mr. Smeathan? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. I believe that draws us to a spot where we would consider Commissioner Archer. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. And this is for Jim. Uh, is is the Department of Revenue can can this decision that they're making be appealed? Yes, it can be. And how long would that process take? That could take several weeks to get a decision from the Kansas Department of Revenue on it. And one of the open questions I still have is obviously when you do a property tax appeal, if you win, you get a refund. It's not clear yet. And what we've found that if we appeal and we win that we get a refund for whatever we expend, expend before that point in time. I'm not sure that it will, I'm not sure that the appeal would give us a refund or if it would just work prospectively only. We're still looking at that piece of it. But we do have an opportunity to, to appeal. Uh, the process would be we would submit the application through JADO and uh, once it's denied, then we'd have an opportunity to appeal. But that would, I would anticipate uh, especially at this time of year, that that would take quite a while. But it could be worthwhile to do so for future issues involving JADO. I'm not saying that's not a worthwhile undertaking because we actually do disagree with that determination. 
However, this, is, this is a radical change from what we've always operated under in the past. Is that correct? Well, this is the first time we've done a construction proce uh, project through JADO, but um, when you just read the statutes and you look at what JADO is, it's a interlocal agency that's a subdivision of the city and the county. I, I don't want to throw too much mud at the Kansas Department of Revenue because we're still waiting for <laughs> our decision on this um i look at it as we're a body that's derivative of the city who's exempt the county who's exempt we're building a facility for an educational institution which is exempt um every way you turn hmm. everywhere you turn on this project it's exempt uh, we were that's that's why we were a little bit surprised a, a lot surprised and why um, we're sitting here tonight trying to figure out how to sort through this. But by having the contract assigned to Shawnee County, that will be a workaround for that problem. We had very specific discussions with um, Kansas Department of Revenue on that, explained that um, JDO would still be the owner of the property, um, explained you know the process that we would go through the funds that would be used and was told that that would be exempt from sales tax under that scenario either the city or the county either one question question and betty i, I don't want to put you on the spot but i'm going to sorry <laughs> um but how how would this work then um I know oftentimes we have project budgets and then it's set aside separately from everything else. So could you kind of help? Mm -hmm. Have you given that In, in some a situation thought? like this, we would just basically, as you said, act as a pass-through. We would set up a, an agency um, fund that would pay this money out mm -hmm. and then um, we would get reimbursed. So on the county's books, it would be an in and out, okay. uh, we would, but we would pay the money out and then get a reimbursement that would offset that. Uh, that's that's you know basically how it would not affect our financials. It would be handled as an agency fund in in our financial um, statements and um, in our accounting system. So it, we would just be working as a, a pass through. Um, one of my concerns when he first brought it up was that we would be uh, have an agreement that we would be reimbursed in a very timely fashion. Good point. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Lester. Oh, sorry, Emerson. Oh, okay. Sorry. No, no problem. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, well, for, first of all, I mean, my company's done probably 75 projects for Shawnee County over the last 30 years, and uh, I have no problem. I mean, Shawnee County does an excellent job of administering projects and uh, very fair. Now, if something happens in the next couple of years when I'm working for you, forget I ever said that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I absolutely have no problem. <laughs> yeah, please erase the tape. Uh, I do have a question, though. And, and I, first of all, I appreciate you looking into this because we could have approved the contract tonight and then found out uh, in, in a month when we got tried to get the exemption certificate that it wasn't. So that had been a huge. So I really appreciate the diligence of the county in checking on this. I do have a question. We're also going to consider these new market tax credits. Would this in any way change that or interfere with that? Um, I sent an email to Mr. White and asked him that precise question because that's another issue. Are we going to try to save $291,000 and cost ourselves one or 1 $1.1 1 .1 million in the process? And his answer was no, not at this time. There will be through um, structuring that new market tax credit, the entities that will have to be structured along with that program, there may be some changes that need to be made, either with, with a number of contracts. Um, but he said at this time, no. There is no uh, risk to that program based upon the county being the sole contractor on this project. Thank you. I'm going to take a stab at having this motion. I'm going to probably need some help along the way, making sure we get all the points. The motion, as I understand it, would be tonight 
a motion to amend the proposed contract with Champion Builders to change the Board of uh, County Commissioners for Shawnee County, Kansas as an owner on the contract and remove JADO. JADO shall reimburse Shawnee County timely for all funds expended on the project. Any disputes regarding the project shall come back to JADO and Shawnee County's participation in the contract is contingent upon Shawnee County being able to have adequate bonding from the contractor. Does that cover all points that we've discussed? I think that covers the points that we've discussed. That is a motion. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Motion made by Commissioner Cook, seconded by Mayor Della Isla. Is there further discussion on this motion? Uh, Commissioner Archer? I just want to say I can't support the motion. Uh, there's, for me, uh, in my fiduciary duty to Shawnee County, um, there are just too many unanswered questions and too many what ifs. So I will be voting no. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Any other discussion? <coughs> Councilman yeah. Lesser. Quick question. Tomorrow, uh, if, if, if we pass this tonight, tomorrow, who, who picks the phone up and, and calls Champion and asks them to change the bonding? Who, 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 what department's responsible for that? I've already spoken to Greg Murray and asked him about the change and whether he explained what the rationale would be if the change was made, whether he had any issues with working with Shawnee County on this, and he said no. Um, Zach, I believe, has also had a conversation with him about the bonding issues and the fact that we're going to need to um, work on those issues through that. But the lingering question with that would be whether there would be any additional fees to champion for getting bonds reissued or anything like that. And I think that would probably be appropriately uh, as a change order for Champion if they had to pay additional money to get the bonds reissued. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, yeah. Um, there shouldn't be any charge um, on that. So w when we do instruct them, how are we going to instruct them to have the bonds now, the, the name of the bonds? Well, I think that's still a work in progress. I think that's a work in progress. I think we need to talk to the issuer of the bonds and explain what we're doing, what we're attempting to do now and why, and, and to make sure that everybody's protected. Thank you. Any other discussion? At this time, I'm going to call a roll call vote. Commissioner Bueller? Aye. Commissioner Cook? Yes. Commissioner Archer? No. Mayor Daly Isla? Yes. Councilman Padilla? Yes. Councilman Lesser? Yes. Motion then passes with Commissioner Archer dissenting. We now move on to item number four. Is, before we start item number four, is there any additional item that we need to cover with item number three with regard to legal counsel? Um. Mr. Chair, if you would refer to my memorandum, you might, look, might look at item oh, number two. I apologize. Thank you. <clears throat> Always turn to the second page. <laughs> so, uh, additionally, I believe that it's appropriate at this time for there to be a motion to direct Go Topeka to hire Dean Farrell, LLC, to provide services to Go Topeka on the East Topeka Learning Center project with an anticipated budget and fees in the approximate amount of $15,000. Um, Jim, can you kind of give us a little bit of background on that and how we, uh, what's already being done with this? Yes, sir. Um, as you know, Dean Farrell's already been involved in this project, and technically he's under contract with Washburn University to be a consultant. We felt that it would be best so that everyone's interests are protected and we believe the interests of Washburn, Washburn Tech as Lassor is the same interest as Jado, Shawnee County, City of Topeka owner. Um, and so our recommendation would be to have Dean Farrell also 
act as consultant on behalf of the owner on the project and split those fees with Washburn University. And then that would also ensure maybe protecting the interests of the bodies that are engaged. Yes. This is a motion that has been made. Is there a second? Second. Showing Councilman Lesser as the second for the motion. Discussion on the motion. Commissioner Archer. Yeah, I explain this again, Jim. I'm not sure. Again, this is the first time I've seen this. Uh, I hate doing business last minute where we're supposed to sit as a, as a body and make decisions where we've had absolutely no pre-work. So the, could you explain this again to me? Yes. Um, I was asked to um, determine the nature of Mr. Farrell's involvement on the project. I've been, I have been speaking with him about it. I spoke with him and he does have a, he is, his involvement to date has been as a consultant through his consultant firm on behalf of Washburn University. Um, now that we're going to have a construction contract and move forward with construction, um, the feeling was that it would be a good idea to put him under contract on behalf of the owner as well as the lessee um, to provide cons consultation on the project, um, principally if there would be any recommended change orders, things like that on the project, and to basically oversee and ensure the quality and timeliness of the work. Why wouldn't the contract be with Shawnee County? Um, under the contract, Go Topeka is still operating as the owner's representative on the project. And so Dean would be available to work and consult with Go Topeka. And that's why the motion is for Go Topeka to hire Dean Farrell as consultant to work directly with Go Topeka on the project. I guess I'm just, and maybe it's me, I'm just confused as to why our con it wouldn't be a contract with Shawnee County since now it is our project. We could do it either way. Okay. I mean, it, it's, um, we could do it that way and um, seek reimbursement then back for the costs of that project. If we were to address any of those concerns, if, if we were to have an amendment to the motion, and it would read as follows, the motion would read, motion to direct go to Pika to hire Dean Farrell Consulting LLC to provide services to Shawnee County on the East Topeka Learning Center. Would that would... Th I think that would be that even would be better. more clear to me. I, I, uh, I think that would be even better. And I think the idea to get Dean involved is outstanding. I mean, uh, given I think it's a great idea. I just was confused with the language and who's reporting to who. As, as my motion, I would amend the motion to read that it would provide services to Shawnee County on the East Topeka Learning Center. Councilman Lesser, are you willing to again second that? I second that. Any additional discussion regarding this motion? Again, if we could have a roll call vote. Commissioner Bueller? Aye. Commissioner Cook? Yes. Commissioner Archer? Aye. Mayor De La Isla? Yes. Council Member Padilla? Yes. Council Member Lesser? Yes. Passes. I think that then, now we're done with item number three. If we could go on to item number four, the discussion of the new market tax credit. You could have that read. Item four, action item, action to proceed and close on the new markets financing transaction to secure net funding of $1 million for the East Topeka Learning Center renovation and addition project. Good evening, Jado. I actually have our consultant from Columbia Capital, Jeff White, on the phone. It is spring break for him this week, so he has <laughs> dialed in. He's been patiently waiting, trying to listen to what you're saying. I don't know how clear it came through. Commissioner Cook and I spoke briefly before. If you can be very careful if you ask any questions of him that you will speak directly into your microphone so he'll be able to hear you. Um, with that, Jeff, it's your stage. Mr. Chairman and members, I'm with you today. So uh, a good news story today, as my memo indicated, uh, 
we uh, our project was uh, successful in securing new markets tax credits allocation uh, to allow us to uh, to fill a project gap um, in the total cost of the project. And uh, as my memo indicated, uh, I would expect that the value of the credits be. Uh, at the end of the uh, closing in the seven-year compliance period for the for the tax tax credit process to be uh, north of one million dollars. Uh, just by way of quick background, uh, the new markets program has been around uh, for more than fifteen years. It's enjoyed bipartisan support in Congress over that period of time, and the purpose of the program is to encourage private investment in what the statute. Uh, income communities. Uh, low income communities are defined census tract by census tract, and it's generally employment, high poverty, uh, or uh, low family incomes, or a combination uh, of those. Uh, so the, the process to uh, secure new markets tax credits is relatively complex and certainly not assured. Uh, we were lucky to find a partner who uh, had an allocation of tax credits that they were willing to make available to us for this project. Uh, that entity, which is a, a quote-unquote community development entity, or CDE, you may you may hear me slip into New Markets Department uh, and talk about them, uh, is uh, Raza Development Fund out of Phoenix. Uh, they are very excited to be our partner in this project. and. Uh, have an excellent reputation in the new markets industry, and I, I think will be a good uh, good partner with us. As the as the item before you indicates, um, what we're seeking today is your general blessing to move ahead with the financing. We're not asking you to uh, to approve final documents. We're not asking you uh, to even formally commit to uh, to undertaking this transaction. Um, because all of that will, will have to be documented uh, over the, the course of the next couple months. Uh, but what we are asking today is for you to say uh, that, uh, generally speaking, you're in favor of proceeding with a new markets financing in order to make this million-dollar-plus um, outside contribution to the project a reality uh, and to authorize us to proceed to start to, to put the pieces together to, to bring the transaction to reality. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm certainly happy to try uh, and address anyone's questions on the, on the matter. And for, for those folks that took time out of their calendar over the last week or so uh, to connect with me, uh, thank you very much. I know it's, uh, uh, there's a lot of moving parts to this, and I definitely appreciated your, um, your, uh, your, the time that you spent with me learning more about the program. At this time, we've all been provided the memorandum and additional supporting documentation as was requested at the last JADO meeting. Are there any questions for Mr. White? All right. Seeing none, at this time, is there a motion to proceed in with the new markets financing transaction to secure net funding? Uh, for the East Topeka Learning Center Renovation and Addition Project. I would make that motion. Motion made by Mayor Della Isla, seconded by Councilman Padilla. Uh, yes. Thank you. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, we could have a roll call vote. Commissioner Bueller? Aye. Commissioner Cook? Yes. Commissioner Archer? Aye. Mayor Della Isla? Yes. Councilmember Padilla? Yes. Council Member Lesser. Aye. Passes. Thank you very much, Jeff. We look forward to yeah, working with you. Thank you all. I appreciate it. Congratulations again, and we look forward to, uh, uh, to, to, to uh, bringing back a completed transaction. Very good. Thank you. Our next item. Item 6, public comment. We have one signed up for public comment. Carol Marco. First of all, I'd like to say I'm really excited about the East Topeka Learning Center. I think it's going to be a great plus for us. I also want to take an opportunity, because I drive by, to let you know that 49th Street is under construction, and I'm sure everybody around it is really excited. Um, 
I want to take advantage of the fact that you're having this extra meeting to address something that I had said at the last JATO meeting because I think my comments were misunderstood. For those of you that were not there at the last meeting, I stated that I think it is time now to remind everybody that we have several small, smaller communities within our county and that we all pay the half cent sales tax that fund economic developments. These communities deserve services and granted, they are on a much smaller scale, just like Topeka. It is not time, is it not time for some programs, classes, satellite offices to be offered to them? Uh, 712 is a small business incubator, and our sm smaller towns are usually made up of small businesses. My comment was that we need to have cl things closer to the people that live in the rural area of the county. I'm going to use myself as an example. I live on Wanamaker Road. It is a 32 mile round trip if I were to go to 712 for a program. But if that same program or a similar program was offered in, say, Auburn, it would be an eight and a half mile round trip. We also have a lot of outstanding venues within the county where social events could be held. And again, one that comes to mind is Glacier's Edge Winery. We also have areas within the county where individuals are socially and economically at a disadvantage. One that comes to mind is some areas of Montero Montero. I stated that I would be interested in knowing that this where the the small businesses that have received incentives. And I would very much like to thank Glenda for providing me with this information. To my surprise, though, I hadn't realized when it was presented, and we were told that 44 businesses had received incentives, that we were talking clear back to 2016 to the present. I guess I was kind of thinking it was more current, like from, say, 2017 to the present. But that's just my thought. Um, I took the list that she gave me, and I would like to share it with all of you. And I will say that I did the research, and, you know, I apologize if I'm in error in any way. I'm not the greater person on a computer, but... Um, of the 45 listed since 2016, you'll notice that only one had an address outside of Topeka, and that was Silver Lake. One was also listed twice. I really think that the public and maybe some of the JATO members would like to know about these businesses or how unsuccessful these businesses are. While I was doing my research, I found that it was clearly stated that only one business has closed out of the 44. I think that's amazing. It shows a very positive outcome. I think that needs to be stated. Um, I, looked, I looked at the list. I did business with some of them. I had no clue. I'll try to do business with more of them. Um, I myself, and I think maybe some of you would, because it's been mentioned a time or two in some of the meetings. Can I have like two more minutes, please? Is there a motion to extend time? I move to extend. Councilman Padilla, motions. Councilman, sorry, Mayor Del Isla, seconds. All in favor, please rise your raise your right hand. So that it passes. Two more minutes being added. Thank you very much. I'm just about done. Um. <laughs> Sorry, I'm new at this. In, in the county, we don't have these fancy machines. <laughs> if we did, it wouldn't be me operating. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I get that. No. This, this is a great list, but I think it would benefit everybody the public and all of the members of JADO, if we could see a short description of these companies, you know, did they meet their requirements for their incentives? Um, 
And I believe this should apply to just about every area within GoToPeka because I, I think we all need to see how our sales tax money is being spent. We're, we're talking $5 million a year. Um, all adults, we know that there's going to be good and we know that there's going to be failures. I mean, nothing is 100% all the time. Um, I would just like to say I kind of got a little sidetracked that, you know, a lot of our smaller towns have community centers or libraries where events could be held, and I think this should be considered. Thank you. And I only needed a minute. <laughs> Thank you. And I think that's a good point that was made, is making sure that we're not just focusing in on one area or one part to making sure this affects and lifts the entire Shawnee County area. And so that point was not lost last time on me. Thank you, Carol. Any other comments? We are then adjourned.